You know, I grew up in the mean streets of Baltimore, you know, back in a time when it was sometimes easier to find trouble than it was to find a good crab cake. <laughs> no, I'm lying, I'm lying. I grew up in the, in the suburbs of Baltimore. It, it was a real nice neighborhood where I grew up. I mean, like I grew up on the street, but not in the streets, if you know what I mean. Uh, it was a time when, you know, we had community and Little League baseball and we could ride my bike through the neighborhood and go to the store. And really, the only uh, trouble we really had back then was we called him Black Omar. You know, I know you might have watched The Wire and thought about Omar, but listen, we had a real live Omar in our neighborhood who terrorized us. And I can just remember as a kid trying to uh, navigate uh, how much I, you know, how, how much I really wanted to go ride to the store and get that McDonald's versus how much I really wanted to face Omar and tell him, no, he couldn't ride my bike and face those consequences. Uh, so it was really a, a, a time when dealing with that fear, you know, as a, a 10, 11, 12 year old and, and just how, what is it going to mean about me growing up only my mom to run home to for help? I didn't have brothers, didn't have a dad there in the house uh, and really trying to deal with that and cope with that and, and what that really meant. Facing that Omar, we all have some kind of Omar in our lives. We have someone who or something that we fear uh, that we have to really ask ourselves uh, what's more important or what's, what's more valuable facing that fear or succumbing to that fear. You know, it wasn't that long ago that I was working a job that I hated, you know, and I know we all have had jobs that we didn't like going to, but this job was different. Like every morning, it was the same routine. I would get to work five minutes before it was time to clock in. I would sit in the car and ask myself the same, you know, questions like what could, else could I be doing with my day rather than going in here for eight hours? So it was the same routine. I would get out the car. I would walk in and, and it was on the third floor. My office was on the third floor. So I, uh, we walked, I would always walk up the steps and there was this balcony over top that you could look down on. And every morning I would look down at that balcony and ask myself the same question. If I jumped, would I die? Now, I wasn't literally going to jump. I wasn't physically going to commit suicide. But every morning I thought about the way I was forfeiting my passion my purpose, uh, just watching it die by going into that job. And I would just think about all the things, like all the people who were relying on me. And this was, you know, after I'd already written uh, best-selling books, I'd already been on uh, stages across the country speaking and impacting lives. Uh, but here I was still in a position because, you know, uh, your bills want to get paid every month, right? They don't care what your title is, uh, what you've done in the past. They want to know what have you done for me lately? So, you know, bills got to get paid. You got to do what you have to do. Uh, and there I was, and it was just a matter of every day going in there, knowing there was something more in life for me, uh, but also knowing that the work I was doing like just did not matter. Like I did not matter. And it was a place that I found myself in is just, what do we do? What do I, I do in, in, in order to keep um, living, to keep thriving, to keep impacting lives, but to get myself out of that situation? Uh, so it was, a, it was a, a long road of just every day, that, that depression, that anxiety, that, that sadness, uh, you know, going home to my wife and to my kids and, you know, and, and being upset with them, not trying to take it out on them. The fact that I was upset at work, uh, just dealing with those things, you know, as a man, you know, I can't, you know, I can't just go and sit home and, and tell my wife, hey, I got this dream. What's going to happen? So just really going through that was, um, you know, an experience that, that really turned into something uh, that that uh, uh, built me and made me even better. Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docuseries. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docuseries, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences, I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person, and, and I wanna take that and I wanna release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, 
but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise. And think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise. And, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. And if that's you and you someone that's wanna get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you wanna have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. Go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. Themakingofanentrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there. Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch, and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. <laughs>
You know, and that really uh, changed the way I looked at things in life. It changed the way I dealt with people because then I realized that, you know what, we are who we are regardless. And who's, you know, who's going to be in our circle, who's going to accept us for who we are. You know, we can't control that. Uh, so it really taught me that it, it didn't matter uh, uh, what you've been through. That you at any point, you know, you can always change uh, what, what you want to. Uh, man, that's not where I was going to go. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. So it really taught me at that moment that uh, we can't focus ourselves on trying to appeal to other people, right? Our gifts and our talents uh, that are in us are there to, to build us. It turns out that my whole entire life and career was, was be dealing with writing. You know, my first business, I was a songwriter on a publishing company, okay? Uh, from there, I've written 11, 12 best-selling books. I've ghost-written other books. I've written sales copy that's earned millions of dollars across the, the world for people. Uh, all because I was the kid in that gifted and talented English class. Now, had they told me back then why they put me in that class, like had the uh, teachers and administrators told me, hey, Ryan, we see a gift in you in writing, then maybe that would have reframed my entire high school. But they just kind of threw me in there and said, hey, go, go for it. So, you know, sometimes you don't always see what your gift is. You don't always know why uh, things are, are moving in the way they're moving in your life. But I promise you, if you look back, you know, your, your, your gift, your purpose, it leaves clues. You know, and you've got to be able to tap into that and stop trying to worry about what other people are going to think. Go out there and be the best you, and, and it'll open up so many doors that you, you never could have opened without it. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just want to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you want to release or Maybe you have a story, right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. You're an expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. And I'm gonna talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience, if you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did they get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now, for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I wanna invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right, when, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you maybe in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you, I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise, then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't want to get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And um, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again real soon. See you out. You know, it, I was in the ninth grade when I took my first flight, like on an airplane. So I was coming home from South Carolina, visiting my family for the summer, and I got on the plane and it was raining outside. So I'm thinking, okay, it's going to be, you know, it was dark, it was cloudy, it was raining. <clears throat> okay, we're going to be on a flight. Um, but it was the middle of the day. So we take off. And as we get through the clouds, uh, I was amazed because in my little ninth grade brain, it never dawned on me that 
the sun would still be shining above the clouds, right? So I'm sitting there and we go through the storm, we go through the clouds, all the turbulence, and I'm looking and in the flight, like all you see is sun over everywhere. Like, and, and at that point, like that hit me that the sun going to be the sun, right? The sun is going to always do what the sun do, does and that's shine. And I thought about that in our lives and my life specifically on how we have so many storms, right? We have things that are always going to come against us. Listen, people ask me, how do you keep going, Ryan, after you've lost it all, after you've lost both parents, after you've lost houses, you've lost cars, you've lost a relationship, how do you keep going? And the fact of the matter is, you know, what other choice do I have, right? We all are sons. We're going to keep shining. And that's the thing. You are designed to do something. And as long as you're doing what you were designed to do, you're going to always shine. So we just got to, there's going to be storms, right? You're going to have to go through the storm. But just like in that plane, when you can accelerate, uh, uh, when you can go higher, when you can uh, uh, climb your, uh, raise your altitude, continue to go above the storms, not around the storms. You got to go through the storms, right? And it's going to shake you. It's going to be turbulence. You're going to feel that storm. If you've ever been in a plane, you, you understand that. But once you get above that storm and you look out and you just see all the opportunity, all the sun, all the beautifulness, that's your life. You know, and that's how I look at life as well. Like I look at storms, I'm like, hey, I'm going to tackle these storms because I know uh, I was born to shine. So I want to encourage you to do the same thing. You know, you were born to shine. Uh, when that storm is coming, just get ready, buckle in, you know, get ready to go through it and start shining like the sun you are. You know, a question I hate, uh, the question is when you ever meet someone and, and typically within the first three or four questions, uh, they want to ask you your name, you know, maybe who brought you to the event. Uh, then they ask you, what do you do? And that's the question. Like, I really hate that question. And it's not that it's a bad question. What do you do? But really, when you think about it, when you're just meeting someone, what, what is that question really doing for them? Right. Uh, when we ask that question, it's kind of a position where people are subconsciously judging where they're going to rate you on their scale of respect and what you can do for them. Uh, so, and, and I think about how many times or how many decisions we've made in our lives uh, that were based on us being able to answer that question the way we feel other people will want to hear an answer, right? So I think that, you know, there's a lot of people who are focused on what they do. And really, we should be focused on who we are, right? Uh, what is it that you bring, uh, the value you bring to this world? What would you purpose to do? And don't get so caught up on what you do. We understand, listen, we've just seen over the last three years, a whole lot of people's answer to that question on what you do has changed. But does that change, does that change the value on who you are? Does that change what you bring to the table? No, it doesn't, right? So we've got to make sure that we're focused on who you are, what it is that you are purpose to do, and, and not really focus on uh, uh, answering that question. There's so many times that we, we, uh, the answer we want to give to that question is based on what other people are going to think, what someone else told us we should do, right? So we don't want to get stuck on that. I, you know, when I was able to free myself of worrying about that question, the answer to that question, you know, I was like, oh, my, it just opened up so many doors in my life, so many doors in my career. And I want you to have that same freedom. Stop worrying about what you do. Stop worrying about that answer, rather. You know, just focus on who you are, what you were called to do, who you're called to serve, and let that be uh, what you lead with. And, you know, don't, don't worry about defining your success by your title and your salary, right? Define success by your, your impact, your fulfillment, uh, you know, your time. You know, if there's one thing I hope you walk away with today, uh, watching this program is that, you know, I have, have adopted a brand, a mantra, a mission, whatever you want to call it, whatever new marketing word, you know, lifestyle word you want to use. Uh, and it's born to be dope. And I want to encourage you that you are born to be dope. And what born to be dope simply is, it's a celebration of being unapologetically great at being you. If you got nothing else out of today, then I hope you've gotten out, out of it that, that it's the importance and the value of being you. Right. We all are bringing some kind of special sauce, some kind of, uh, uh, of magic to the table, to our relationships, to our work, to our, our careers, to our families. Right. And we can't get stuck trying to fit into someone else's box. Right. We can't get stuck comparing ourselves to everyone else. We look at the social media like, oh, this person is doing this way. I want to do it that way. This person is doing it this way. No, I'm going to do it that way. You are special. You are dope. You are unique. And when you can tap into what makes you special, that's going to open up the world of opportunity for you. There's someone out there who's waiting for what you have, right? There's someone out there who, who's feeling un, uncertain, uncomfortable about really uh, expressing themselves the way they want to express themselves. Once they see you uh, doing it your way, they'll be like, okay, now I can walk in that path. I can really have the freedom to be me as well. So I am, I'm so you know, excited about making sure that people are out there really understanding how to master 
So I'm so excited about making sure people out there are, uh, understand how to uh, master, magnify, and monetize their unique dopeness. Find out what it is about you that, that really uh, is going to take you to the next level. Uh, bring the impact uh, that you are looking to have and really uh, uh, impact and, and leave the legacy that you want to leave by just being you. So I encourage you, just go out there, be great at being you, because you were born to be dope. One of the reasons people come to Greenhouse Media to work with us is because they have a story they want to share. And uh, we help you not just share your story, not just formulate your story, but we're going to show you how to formulate the story, turn it into a message that you want to share, but then also how to share that expertise so that you're an authority that people want to follow. Okay, so and we have clients that we've helped take their, their story out of their brain because you can have a story in your head, but if no one sees it, it's not going to do anything, right? So how do we get that story out of your mind? put it on paper, right? But then not just how do we put it on paper because we move beyond the book. So once you have your book written, now what? So people come to us because they have a book. Maybe they need help writing their book. Maybe they've already written a book, but it's not written in a way that's going to really help monetize uh, their message. Uh, or they have a book that's done and then they want to take it to the next level. So what we do is we'll take that book and we turn that book into a visual story. And we do that through an online course. So we can do that through uh, a, a brand film. So people come to us because they want us to take that book, take their message and show them how we can make that more compelling, how we can visually uh, create that into something that's going to reach the marketplace and also, again, make money for them. So if you're looking for an opportunity to do something like that, then we have clients who, whether you've already written the book, whether you have the idea, you just have a message, maybe you're just a speaker and you have a message that you like, how, how do I get this to more people? That's what people call me for. So we can really hone in on your message, make it clear, make it uh, uh, compelling, and then make it captivating so that we can go out there and, and really show you how to do the message, do your sales page and your sales copy and things like that, how to formulate it into a, a funnel that's going to really bring people into your business. So you, one of the things people run into is that they, uh, they don't have the systems in place to really tell their story and run, walk people through uh, their system. You, know, you may tell people, hey, here's a book, here's my story, but then what, right? So we help you make sure that you can put all the pieces together. So now you have a business, not just out there as an author, right? Not just a writer. So uh, we wanna help you do that. That's what we've been doing for uh, 17 years now. And that's, that's our mission. That's our, the impact that we make. And that's where we find our fulfillment in making you take, helping you take your story to the next level and go beyond the book. You know, this has been a, a wonderful experience. I'm so glad that I came to do this. I worked with uh, Shea Brown and his team for a long time on a lot of projects. But I was like, Shea, I want the making of an entrepreneur treatment. I want to come in there and, and do it like I've seen everyone else do it. And one of the things I love uh, most about this experience is that uh, it is very professional, right? It's, it's you coming in here, you're going to get what you're looking for. Uh, they're going to walk you through it. The, the staff, the crew, I'll call them the crew. The crew is uh, uh, just all welcoming. Everyone is here to make sure you look your best. Uh, they, uh, you know, I've been doing the speaking thing for a long time, but I'm not, you know, I'm still learning, right? So they've been able to help me really hone my message hone uh, the things that I need to tweak as well. So this has been a wonderful experience uh, being in the studio. I mean, look, the, the lights, the camera, the action, who doesn't want all of this? So it's been a great experience. I'm, I'm excited, glad I did it, and uh, looking forward to uh, the next one and, and what's gonna come from this. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, and um, I just wanna talk to all my entrepreneurs out there. And if that's you, like you, the entrepreneur, you the business owner, you the speaker, you the coach, you the author, you the network marketer, you the person that just want to do more good in the world by solving a problem and you want to be paid, right? And so think about right now, if you had more high qualified paying clients that was like banging at your door, how would your life be different? Um, when there's more revenue coming in and you're able to hire more people, and you're able to make a bigger difference. What would that look like? Or, or number two, maybe there's folks that are coming in right now and they're knocking at your door, boom, 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 boom. But the only challenge you have is you're listening. And listen very carefully because this might be you, so listen very carefully. They're not converting fast enough, which means they're talking, they like you, there's conversation going on, but they're not converting. So there's two challenges, right? Number one, I need to attract my ideal clients who can pay me. And number two, once they get in here, I need to have a system 
a sales model or a process so they convert faster. That means they pay you and then they come back. And if you're listening right now, you're saying, Shay, I want to be able to do that, but I don't want my labor involved. I don't want to work any harder. Shay, I'm, I'm at a place right now where I'm ready to reach more people. Um, I'm on a mission, Shay, and I want you to listen very carefully. You were called to serve a group of folks out there, and you can't serve right now because you don't have the revenue to purchase the resources that are necessary to execute that big vision. If that's you as you're listening, any of that resonates with you, I'm going to give you a website, which is Easy Sales Hub. Again, Easy saleshub.com. Let me just spell it. I know you can see it below, but it's E-A-S-Y sales, S-A-L-E-S, hub.com. Now, the reason you want to go over to easy saleshub.com is that that's the place you can come to and you can do two things. One, we'll do a sales audit. So we'll take a look at your sales process, your sales funnels, and we'll see how those are converting. Number two, you can have the tools and resources you need to be able to generate more revenue with less effort so you can serve more folks. So with that being said, as you're watching, go over to www.easysaleshub.com. My name is Shay Brown. Make it a great day, everyone. And um, we'll make some good things how we connect again next time. God bless. Oh.